It's Tuesday, October 20th, 2020, coming to you from beautiful Palm Desert, California. I'm sitting out here on the patio. You may hear the sprinklers in the background. I apologize. Uh, hopefully they'll shut off soon. Uh, it's a beautiful 84 degree evening. Uh, and as beautiful as it is out, we've got some terrible news today uh, for Riverside County, the county that I live in right here. Riverside County is shutting down again. This means churches, hair salons, barbershops, gyms, indoor dining, uh, etc. is shutting down once again. And what does this mean for us? This is a, uh, a leisure and hospitality area. Uh, Palm Springs, Palm Desert, Rancho Mirage, La Quinta. Uh, this is a resort community uh, based on leisure and hospitality. We've got the big resorts, the big hotels, all the way down to the small uh, mom and pop private owned hotels. And so what does this mean? This means a nail in the coffin for the Coachella Valley, uh, for all the shopping on El Paseo, for the Westfield uh, Mall. Uh, what was left of this now is going to be absolutely decimated. I mean, we're already running businesses at 25 and 50 percent of capacity. Now the bars closed, be no, no indoor uh, eating, no indoor drinking, everything will be outside. And uh, the weather's nice, luckily, so that may help save some business. But for the most part, uh, when you're talking about fine dining, when you're talking about the Mastro's and the Roos Crisp and the Morton's, I, I don't know if people are going to go out and pay 100 or 200 or $300 for dinner to sit out under a tent or to sit out in the parking lot or to sit out in the street. Uh, but this really hurts a lot of businesses who don't have the resources to even have outdoor dining. Uh, but Walmart will be open, Costco will be open, the Targets will be open, uh, all the big box stores will be open, but uh, this is really going to decimate uh, this community, in my opinion, without a doubt. I, I, I don't uh, know how it cannot. Um, what's it going to do to the small business owner, the small salon owner, the barber shop, the gym owner? Uh, all this now is shutting down in set within 72 hours, and this is going to go on until further notice. And there's a lot of other things uh, that I'm hearing also, but I'm not going to comment yet until I know. But um, uh, the restrictions are getting absolutely ridiculous. So beautiful 84 degree evening here in the desert. But who's going to be flying out here now? Uh, we we, we, we um, depend on a lot of the Canadian uh, money to come out here. Uh, who's going to come out here when people can't even go sit inside of a restaurant? Uh, who's going to come out here when the gyms are closed, uh, when the bars are closed. I mean, this is an absolute disaster happening at the worst possible time. This is our season. This is, the, this is what the small and medium business owners depend on is the season. The weather now is breaking. We're getting under 100 degrees. Uh, this is our season. This is the time where businesses and restaurants really make their money and uh, couldn't happen at a worst possible time as we are now heading into holiday uh, shopping and these businesses are going to be so limited uh, and, and who knows it could get even worse next week but that's where we're at right now it, it's just a, a horrific what is taking uh, place with the California economy um, there's um, obviously um, a lot of people leaving this state and and you can see why uh, understandably uh, people are furious they're losing their businesses and just as they were allowed to come back a little bit at 25 50 percent still I, I, that's a massive struggle now being shut down again and this sends out a terrible uh, message to people who come here in vacation uh, people who come here and spend money uh, I talked to somebody um, at one of the grocery stores yesterday he told me he heard that 90% of the uh, people who come here uh, during our season to vacation, uh, to who do VRBOs, um, who who rent homes during the season, he said he said he heard that 90% of these people are not even going to show up. I mean, if that happened, uh, this area will be completely decimated. Even if 50% of these people don't show up, uh, if we lose 25% of these people, things are going to be decimated. I cannot expand enough the amount of stores that have closed up that are never coming back. I was driving around today, more stores closing, more for sale signs, more for lease signs. Um, and yet, you know, somebody wrote me the other day saying they were on a, a California uh, freeway the other day coming out, of, coming out of Bishop or something. Is there a lot of sand rails and stuff over there, dunes? 
whatever, I, I don't know. But they said lots of RVs, lots of sand rails. Uh, so, you know, everything looks great. Everything's fine. Lots of cars on the road and everybody's pulling, you know, everybody's pulling a sand rail with their lifted truck or their RV. And that's fine and dandy. Just ask those people, um, how many more years of financing do they have on that truck, that sand rail, or that RV? How many of those toys are actually paid for? What you're witnessing driving down the freeway near Bishop is a massive amount of debt. Those trucks, those sand rails, and those RVs, most of those, 90 plus percent, are all financed. And as we're heading deeper into this depression, these are going to be the people. I saw this back um, in 2008 when everybody had the lifted trucks. They had the boats at Lake Havasu. Uh, they had the second homes in Havasu. And when this thing hit, all the sales uh, on, on the homes, they were 50 cents on the dollar. Uh, three boat builders in Havasu went out of business. Boats were, were just a dime a dozen. Uh, lifted trucks on sale. So... Uh, you know, it's the same old, same old. Everything looks great until it doesn't. And everybody goes, oh, look at all the new homes they're building. Look, look at the home sentiment. Um, look at the low interest rates. Everything's going to be okay. I heard the same song and dance back in 2007. And within months, the whole thing imploded. And we had the worst housing crash in history. This one is going to be much worse. We are going to see so many repos of cars and RVs and boats and sand rails. And we're going to see so many people defaulting on their second homes, their primary residences. It, this is going to be a disaster. So uh, for those people out there that think nothing bad's coming, enjoy this time now because it is on borrowed time. So today I'm watching the uh, markets. Dow Jones was up around 400 points and uh, closed down a little bit over 100 because the stimulus did not happen today. And now the market is hoping that tomorrow uh, we get stimulus. But just, you know, it's amazing the algorithms that control these markets. So uh, we can have a politician come out and say, we're getting close. Maybe something's going to happen and the market can go up 400 points. Then at the end of the day, nothing happens and the market comes down 300 points. So we close up 100. Um, it, it's unbelievable. This whole thing, I mean, just look where we're at today. I mean, look at these fraudulent markets. Uh, so dependent on more Fed injections to hold them up. Uh, just imagine if we had a 50 basis point uh, uh, increase in interest rates. Everything would just crash. If we don't get stimulus, these markets crash. Uh, and we're going to get stimulus at some point. Uh, whether it's this year or next year, uh, it's coming at some point. But if we do not get stimulus this year, these markets are going to begin to hemorrhage. And so you can see how uh, we got hit yesterday. We're back up today, and then we got hit at the end of the day, and we were only up 100 points. If we do not get stimulus in the next day or two, uh, we're going to see big, big trouble here in these markets. Uh, again, I cannot even emphasize how controlled uh, these markets are. Uh, these markets aren't free. They're completely manipulated. Uh, these markets aren't based on anything but uh, stimulus. Uh, injections, not on the economy, not on uh, profits. Uh, it has nothing to do with that. These markets don't care about profits, profit losses, zombie companies. It uh, doesn't care about anything. It doesn't care about you. All it cares about is when the Fed is going to be injecting trillions and trillions of dollars more into these markets uh, to keep them alive. These markets uh, are on life support. So as we see the disaster unfolding uh, on Wall Street, uh, completely propped up, a propped up Ponzi scheme, uh, we see the real economy collapsing. And the bad news we got here in Riverside, California, which is just going to decimate my area. Uh, we look at cities like Chicago. Uh, they're cutting jobs. And they are weighing a $94 million property tax. Why is that? Because they're absolutely broke. They spent all your money. They wasted all your money. Uh, and so now, what are they going to do? They're going to go after the taxpayer and want you to pay higher, ta uh, higher property taxes than you already do. I believe Chicago has... Uh, the highest, if, uh, if not one of the highest, property taxes in the United States of America. Uh, on top of that, it's a war zone, has a $1.2 billion budget deficit. Now, they want a massive tax hike to get out of the hole. Chicago has $10 billion to pay 
billion dollars worth of bills. Uh, you don't need to be a mathematician to see how bad this is. The outcome is $36.4 billion shortfall, which breaks down to a burden of $39.4 thousand dollars per taxpayer right there in Chicago. This means that each taxpayer would have to pay $39.4 thousand dollars in future taxes without receiving any related services or benefits. And this isn't just Chicago. This is happening all over the United States of America. So as we head in deeper into this depression, uh, we're seeing cities completely bankrupted. You know, people will tell me, oh, things are great in my state. And then I look up their state and their state is billions and billions and billions of dollars in debt. Uh, they, th then I look up how many people are receiving food stamps. I, I look at the unemployment numbers. They're horrendous. So you might live in some small city in Indiana or Michigan and you're doing well. And God bless you. If you are, you, you should be on your hands and knees thanking God uh, tonight that you're doing well. But many of these people that think they're doing well, um, they, they haven't looked at the amount of debt in their cities. Uh, they haven't looked at the amount of debt of their state, and they apparently don't know the amount uh, of debt that the U.S. government now has. 27 plus trillion dollars of debt. We're looking at 200 trillion dollars of debt if you include unfunded liabilities, Medicare, Medicaid. Then you look at the massive debt with these unfunded pensions. So no matter where you're at in America, you are not safe from what is coming. Everybody is gonna be affected. No matter how well you're doing today, everybody is going to be affected at some point by this debt. Another article, Goldman, even more job losses coming. This is coming out of Goldman Sachs. It's a little dark out here this evening, so pardon me. Strategists at Goldman Sachs are predicting a wave of mergers and acquisitions that will lead to even more job losses. So we're gonna see companies cutting the fat. We're gonna see uh, companies uh, buying up uh, other companies and consolidating, uh, reorganizing, and that means that lots of jobs are gonna go bye-bye. Also, we're going to see continued workforce automation uh, heading into 2021. Uh, this is going to replace a lot of jobs. So you're not only gonna be competing from people outside of this country who are coming here for jobs, you're gonna be competing against robotics, automation, and technology. So while the rich, while the corporations, and while the banks have been bailed out, you, ladies and gentlemen, are on your own and you haven't even seen what's coming yet. It is going to be very, very bad. Uh, if you think this is the bad times, look, I, I, these are not good times. There's no doubt about it. You can just look at the numbers, uh, look at the debt, look at the tens of millions unemployed, uh, look at uh, this Ponzi scheme stock market. Uh, just look at all the manipula manipulation taking place um, on Wall Street. Look at the political uncertainty, the social uncertainty. This is a horrifying time in American history. But this is not even near how bad it's going to get. Again, if you think this is bad, you haven't seen anything yet. Another article on the hedge today. January is going to be a mess. Now we get into uh, all these renters uh, and these moratoriums, uh, all these forbearances that have been taking place. At least 8 million renters are facing eviction in the coming months. These folks owe $32 billion in back rent. And so people think that this has no effect on the economy. People aren't paying their bills. bills. That means there's a winner and there's a loser. Somebody is losing here. And we look at the commercial back uh, securities market, uh, all this vacant uh, commercial real estate. Uh, there's big losers here. And uh, somebody's going to pay some very serious prices here. Uh, this is exerted financial pressure on property owners and property operators, many of whom have failed to service uh, their own mortgage debt. And I know a lot of people will write me and tell me how, how bad they hate landlords and uh, the landlords deserve this. Um, if there's no landlord, uh, how are you going to rent a property? If there's no uh, landlord, how do you rent your house? How do you rent that apartment? How do you rent a condo? We, we've got to have people uh, out there that take risk, make uh, borrowing 
uh, this money, taking the risk to rent a property for people to live in so, so that those people at some point get an opportunity to go buy their own property or to become their own landlord. But, uh, you know, not all landlords are bad, and I'm not taking sides here. At the end of the day, when uh, millions of people aren't paying their bills, uh, and landlords start going out of business and operators of these properties go out of business. And then the financial toll it's going to take uh, on Wall Street when uh, these loans are not being serviced, we're going to have big, big problems. This cannot continue. This is completely 100% unsustainable. So as we enter this economic abyss, as America is falling, as we are witnessing uh, a depression that has now begun, and it's going to be the worst depression uh, in human history. Um, I was reading an article in The Hedge today, and this, t this to me is very concerning. It should scare every one of you. And it's um, titled, Americans must wake up to the ugly reality. China is now the world's largest economy. And now I know there's a lot of people out there that will deny this and you can't deny it. It's very obvious. But there's a lot of people out there that just believe this doesn't even matter. America's never going to fail. America can't fall. The U.S. dollar can't collapse. The U.S. economy can't collapse. We can't go into a depression. We have no global threats. We have no global competition. Uh, America is going to last forever. So while America is bankrupt, while America does not manufacture anything except consumption, the Chinese have been very, very busy. They're making literally everything in the world. Uh, they're making and producing more steel than anybody in the world, more concrete than anybody in the world. Their infrastructure is the newest in the world. Yes, they have massive debt, but I would rather be producing and manufacturing things and having the newest infrastructure in the world than to be having massive debt and being not, uh, having an economy based on consumption, having a infrastructure 50 or 100 years old, um, and not making or producing anything like the United States of America. So yes, uh, China has big problems, but they have the newest infrastructure. Their technology is going nuts. Um, they have over 20,000 tons of gold. Um, we're really going to be in very serious trouble here if we do not wake up. I'm going to paraphrase through this article. It's time to admit reality. China has now displaced the U.S. to become the largest economy in the world. Uh, the Chinese economy last year did uh, $24.2 trillion. The U.S. economy did $20.8 trillion. And I think these uh, statistics come from the IMF, but it, it, it's a very good article. And there's no doubt, China is cleaning our clock. China will be the only major economy that records positive growth this year. The only economy that will be bigger at the end of the year than it was when the year began. China is becoming more emboldened as a ge geologic, geopolitical player as America just consumes more and more, as the average American gets deeper and deeper into debt, uh, as America continues to ship off jobs. Um, look, we're, <laughs> we're going to be in very, very big trouble here economically because if we are not producing and manufacturing anything other than consumption and debt, uh, it is game over for America, and I hate to say that. And I'm going to leave you with this. Uh, you're not going to be able to stop uh, the tsunami that's coming. Impossible. But what you can do is prepare for yourself. Uh, and the best thing that you can do is continue to retain knowledge, uh, read, uh, and really open up your minds to what is really happening economically here in America to protect yourself. Knowledge is power. Uh, continue to, to just retain as much knowledge as you can. Stop believing everything on the television. Uh, get out of the system as much as you can. The people that are 100% in the system are going to get uh, obliterated, period. Make sure that you're your own central bank. Make sure you're holding your own assets. Gold and silver are on sale right now. Uh, make sure you have all preparations. You're not going to be able to stop what is coming. And I hope at some point, everything uh, after it implodes, that this country wakes up and gets back on its feet and starts manufacturing. We, we've got to stop just giving money uh, to people. We've got to stop covering everything up with printed dollars. We're debasing 
our currency. We're going to see massive inflation here in America. It's already begun. Um, we must now start teaching people skills. Uh, we must be producing and manufacturing goods and services uh, to just have a, 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 a leisure and hospitality industry and consume and consume and consume. Uh, that's not going to work. And just falling back on our reputation uh, from 50 years ago or 100 years ago, it's not going to work. China is not scared. China is going to continue uh, to um, expand its production. Uh, it's mining all over Africa now. It's all over the world. Uh, it's got the four biggest banks in the world, 20 plus thousand tons of gold. Their technology is, is, is going absolutely bananas. Uh, they are going to be a superpower that we are no doubt going to be forced to contend with, and we are right now, and we're losing. So um, make sure that you are protecting yourself because all this right now, what we're seeing, all this political uncertainty, social uncertainty, uh, China, uh, the fraudulent Ponzi scheme, stock market, uh, the stimulus, the massive money printing that's coming, this is all 110% bullish, bullish for gold and silver. Protect yourself with metal. Paper is gonna disappear. It's gonna be incinerated uh, with this collapse. Uh, it won't even be worth putting on the bottom of a birdcage. So um, protect yourself with something that's been here for 5,000 years. Paper is just going to blow away in the wind. You better be holding something real, and you better make sure you're holding the real thing. Not paper gold, not paper silver. You better be holding the physical, and you better be holding it somewhere safe that you can get to in a time of emergency. Uh, we're going to see major transitions coming to America. Protect yourself. Walk close to God. Big changes are coming. If we don't see stimulus here very soon, you can bet this market is going to see a massive uh, uh, implosion take place. It needs stimulus. It needs it now. Uh, it's coming. Whether it's 2020 or 2021, the stimulus is coming, and that is going to be super, super bullish for gold and silver, and you're going to see your dollars continue to buy less and less and less. More and more dollars flooding in. Um, chasing after less goods, less services, you're going to see a lot, a lot of inflation. Protect yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Look, I don't care uh, where you buy your gold or silver from. Just make sure you're getting some and make sure you have all your preparations. Um, I'm going to leave it there tonight. Uh, I posted another video a couple days ago uh, on Patreon. Please come over, check it out. It was a very, very good video talking more about preparation. I had a very good guest on the show. Uh, so come over, check out the Patreon channel. Thank you uh, to everybody out there who's watching this show, who's joined Patreon. Please, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. God bless all of you.